that knowledge into a completely different unknown context, I would not be able to do anything how to apply this knowledge to unknown content to solve that problem. Right. So, I could see like you know the technology you and we can develop in the lab. Dr. Praveen, how has been your journey from being a Mr. Praveen to Dr. Praveen and uh, I am sure and, and every ecosystem has made you better and has evolved you. As you did your education from different institutions, you met across various different scientists uh, and you also were uh, given various perspectives towards what you could do in life, right? So could you give us some of the examples about your own personal experiences of uh, moving from a school till your postdoctoral and how was this research journey? Okay. Uh, as you said like uh, each place, each university or uh, each research institute I visited, <coughs> it added so much value to my life. That was like a continuous learning process for me. Uh, just to give an example, for example, <coughs> up to my master's college, I really did not have any research experience per se. Okay? So as you mentioned in the previous uh, question like is the knowledge and practical, all I had was the knowledge what was given you know memorize and understand that. But like uh, if you put that knowledge into a completely different unknown context, I would not be able to do anything how to apply this knowledge to unknown content to solve that problem. Yeah. Uh, that was completely unknown for me. So with that background I went to IIC for doing PhD. So that is the first time ever I was introduced to a research. and. Uh, then my entire PhD uh, uh, journey like I focused on learning fundamental principles about chemical molecules, how to design new molecules and understand how they behave, these are the properties right. At that point of time although I was uh, getting exposed to learning a lot of fundamental uh, concepts in the chemistry, uh, one question used to me like uh, bother, uh, it used to bother me quite a bit about like uh, where I apply this knowledge to solve a real life problem. Mm -hmm. uh, that was still is a haunting question for me at that time. I did not have any answers and no one told me okay show the journey what could be in the future. Uh, just to give an example you know we take medicine every day like you know whenever you get sick we go and pick a tablet and we will get well soon. So then the question is like uh, I used to think like how people invent these new new drugs. Okay? So, I used to think this entire drug discovery is like a block box, it happens only in the bigger industries and they develop, they have the infrastructure, they develop the ideas, they bring it to the market and clinic. Uh, at that time it was a wild thought, I, in dreams also I could not uh, imagine that like you and me can de develop the technology in your research lab which can go on become drugs later stage, mm -hmm. that was an, uh, I was not aware of that. And uh, there was no, uh, at least to my knowledge, I did not have any, ex got exposed to any examples to sh uh, show the journey as well. So with that thoughts, then uh, went to my first postdoctoral research in City University of New York in Manhattan, where I had one peculiar outcome it has came up from my entire uh, two plus years stay in that, that is scientific confidence. Right? So, uh, there is like my responsibility is like you know find your own problem, create your own solutions, create your own ideas, test them out. Wow, okay. okay. That's a lot. So, but it is like a um, kid in the candy store, you can try anything you want, yeah. right. So, that is where then I started like you know picking up small small problems to come up with ideas to see and test them out whether it works. And of course in research we know most often they do not then they do right. So you work, generate 10 ideas, you know, 9 of them fail then maybe 1 or 2 might work. But despite of that like you know if you have that success, uh, your, what you are coming out is not just output from that project but rather the output is your scientific confidence thinking that okay, I can identify a problem, I can create a solution, I can demonstrate that. Mm -hmm. I think that is the biggest uh, improvement what I learned from that uh, process. Then after that then I moved to uh, Harvard Medical School uh, in Boston and where 
Another very important skill set added there <coughs> because that's the first time I started seeing people who have been there done that and using this entire basic research knowledge what we acquired that can be used in the laboratory and develop the concepts which can solve real life problems. Mm -hmm. uh, I work in the medical uh, sciences. Yeah. So, uh, I could see like you know the technology you and we can develop in the lab can go on become like a drugs and really so, uh, improve the quality of, uh, of lives of people. Right. You know, so, I think that was the biggest uh, change what I could see. N now, at that time I understand you know this drug discovery or technology development, it is not like black box process. Uh, only like you know uh, somewhere else happened not in your lab. I think all the roots are in your lab if you want to make it. I think that is the biggest lesson what I learned there. Wonderful. I think uh, one of the things which uh, reminds me about what you are saying is I am sure a lot of time the ideas fail in mind but may not be in reality as such uh, and many of them probably need to be tested those ideas to see whether they work or don't work and why don't they work. Uh, so wonderfully has you put that uh, you know, scientific temperament has helped you all uh, because of this various research institution and also to prove to that, um, add, add to that is that um, uh, you could contribute back to the society system, being in the same space and time and do it. Wonderful. Sir. Thank you.